Hello, and welcome to today's Quick Plays video on Breakeven Poker Math. Poker Math can seem very complex, but with some basic knowledge and practice, it can become very easy. And better yet, if you use Poker Math correctly, you can find easy ways to improve your win rate and become a tougher opponent. In this video, I'll show you how to figure out the breakeven percentage of certain plays, and of course, why it will help you at the tables. First, what exactly is a breakeven percentage? This is the mathematical way of saying if X play works this amount, it's break even, or zero EV. If it works less, then it's negative EV, and if it works more, then it's plus EV. Once we know the break even percentage necessary to run a bluff, we can use our hand reading skills to estimate if the bluff will work often enough to make it profitable. The good news, if you are a math nerd like me, is that the formula is incredibly simple. The break even percentage equals risk divided by risk plus reward. Even if you aren't a math nerd, that's still a pretty easy formula to remember. In poker, we are constantly focusing on risk and reward, even if you've never visualized it like this. Every bet you make risks money, and you are making those bets in order to win the reward, or what's in the pot. Let's look at an example to make things more tangible. In this hand, we raise from early position with sixes, folds around to the big blind who calls, and we see a heads up flop of king nine seven. The big blind checks, and we continuation bet for $4. Even though we have a pair in this hand, it's doubtful to be ahead of the big blind's range if he calls or raises us, so we can rightfully assume that our bet here is closer to a bluff than a value bet. If we pull out our fancy break-even formula, we only need to fill in two numbers. The risk is our bet size of $4, since that's what we're risking in this spot, and the reward is the pot, or $6.50, so 4 divided by $10.50 equals 38%. This means if villain will fold 38% of the time, then this bet is break even. If he folds less, then this bet is outright negative EV. And if he folds more than 38% of the time, this bet is outright plus EV. I purposefully use the word outright, since there are plenty of times in poker where a single bet may be outright plus EV or negative EV, but in the context of an entire play, it can swing the other way. For instance, there are spots where the continuation bet may be outright negative EV because he doesn't fold enough given the break-even percentage, but he'll fold a ton of turns and rivers, thus making the overall play plus EV. You may be wondering how you can estimate if villain will actually fold more than the break-even percentage. I personally use the tool Flopzilla to work that out, and you can watch our full-length video on the software if you're interested. With enough off-table practice with a tool like this, you can more correctly visualize how common ranges hit or miss common flop textures. One last thing I want to say here is that you should memorize some of these break-even percentages. Whether you are playing 1 cent, 2 cent online, or 10, 20 live, the break-even percentage math never changes. If you're betting half pot, the break-even percentage will always be the same, whether you're betting 15 cents in a 30 cents or $300 in a 600. So here are the most common break-even percentages that you should memorize. If you bet half the pot, the break-even percentage is one-third, or 33%. If you bet full pot, the break-even percentage is 50. And if you bet a traditional two-thirds pot, the break-even percentage is 40%. Know these percentages like the back of your hand, because these are roughly the bet sizes we use when bluffing. If you decide to use a less standard size when bluffing, like one-fourth pot or an overbet, just pull out the formula and do a quick calculation. It should also be noted that your own equity will influence things. So if you have a big draw, you don't require as many folds as a pure bluff, since you can improve and win sometimes. But this hand has very few outs, and thus will treat it closer to a pure bluff just to simplify things. In this exact spot, Villain calls our C-bet. The turn is a four of hearts, and he bets into us for $12. For giggles, let's say we're considering a bluff raise up to 32 we can still use the same break-even percentage to figure out how often we need villain to fold in order for this bluff raise to be profitable. By raising to 32, our risk is $32, and the reward is the pot size before we make our raise, or 2650. So 32 divided by 32 plus 26.5 equals 55%. Again, if we can expect him to fold more than 55% of the time, we should bluff. If not, we should likely fold unless we really think our measly pair of sixes are ahead enough of the time. If the only thing you take from this video is the break-even percentage formula, you've won. If you also take the break-even percentages to memorize, then you've crushed. Understanding the break-even percentage will help you put mathematical backing to all of your bluffs. Of course, figuring out if villain will actually fold enough is another skill set altogether, but strengthening the math part of your game is never a bad thing.
Same as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, good luck and happy grinding.